you need to eat 30 grams of protein every three to four hours otherwise you're gonna lose all your muscle and you're gonna go catabolic there's only this very small amount of protein your body can absorb in one sitting so you better make the best of this anabolic window otherwise you're simply wasting your time wasted but in this video i'm gonna challenge this belief and i'm gonna tell you how much protein does your body actually absorb in one sitting awesome i love protein first of all let's cover some of the basics why do people think that it's required to spread out your protein intake throughout the entire day protein is the only macronutrient that can't be stored inside the body for long term Carbohydrates can be stored as liver and muscle glycogen. Extra carbohydrates that you don't need will be converted into triglycerides and they get stored as body fat. Fat and extra carbs can be stored in an infinite amount because your adipose tissue is unlimited, basically. You can gain as much adipose tissue as you can possibly consume from too many calories. Protein will be used for elevating muscle protein synthesis and activating mTOR which will help to maintain your current lean muscle mass. To activate these pathways, you need only a very certain amount of protein, and consuming more won't have a dose-increasing effect. You can't really store protein inside the body beyond a certain necessary limit. To store protein as energy, it has to be converted into glucose through gluconeogenesis first, which can then be either stored as glycogen or as fat triglycerides. But there's no protein there. That's why you need to be eating protein consistently because it's the most important macronutrient for survival. You can't really survive for too long without getting adequate amounts of amino acids and proteins because your entire body is literally made of it. Eat the food. But how much protein does your body actually need? That depends on many things like your body weight, amount of lean muscle mass, your activity levels and what kind of diet you're following as well. Being more active in general is going to increase your protein demands because physical activity damages the muscle cells to a certain extent. If you do resistance training, you need more protein to support that training with enough protein synthesis and mTOR activation. If you do primarily endurance training, you need slightly less protein because endurance training doesn't really break down that much muscle tissue as resistance training does. Even if it does, the purpose of endurance training isn't to build muscle or get bigger, so the desired intake of protein wouldn't be higher either. As you age, your ability to maintain skeletal muscle decreases and therefore you need more protein as well. The recommended dietary allowance for protein is 0.36 grams per pound of body weight, which for an average individual who weighs between 150 to 180 pounds would be 55 to 70 grams of protein per day. However, this is not ideal for the majority of population and most people actually need more, especially if you're exercising. In general, the optimal amount of protein tends to be somewhere between 0.7 to 1.0 grams per pound of lean body mass, which for the same average individual who weighs between 150 to 180 pounds would be about 110 to 160 grams of protein at minimum. There are no seeming benefits to eating more than 0.8 grams per pound of lean body mass, even when you're trying to build muscle. You definitely don't need to be eating above 1.0 grams per pound of lean body mass, as you'll simply waste away that protein. Wasted. So, how much protein does your body actually absorb in one sitting? When you digest protein, it gets broken down into amino acids that will be transported into the bloodstream to be used as building blocks. There are a limited amount of transporter cells and receptors in the small intestine which is gonna restrict how many amino acids can be moved into the blood. And this is also the theory why your body can only absorb a small amount of protein in one sitting. Certain proteins will be absorbed faster than others as well because the amino acids will be absorbed quicker. However, there are many other factors that determine protein absorption, such as the pH levels of the gut, the permeability of the intestinal lining, protein sensitivity and the presence of hormones related to gastric emptying. The mainstream consensus is that you can only absorb 30 grams of protein per meal and you need to spread your protein intake across 4 to 6 small meals to maximize protein synthesis over the 24 hour period. However, this theory doesn't mean that if you were to consume fewer meals but with higher amounts of protein, it doesn't mean that you're gonna waste it away. Amino acids and some peptides are able to self-regulate their time in the intestines. For example, the digestive hormone CCK can slow down the contraction speed of intestines in response to protein intake. CCK gets released when you eat dietary protein and it slows down your digestion as to absorb it better. If you were to absorb all of your protein too quickly, your liver wouldn't be able to maintain a steady stream of amino acids into the blood over the 24 hour period because 
you're gonna burn them all for energy. Even if you've eaten a large piece of steak with over 60 grams of protein, you wouldn't be converting those amino acids into energy immediately anyway. Because of CCK and a generally slower speed of digesting steak, the protein from that steak will be digested over the course of many hours and your body will slowly assimilate those nutrients without wasting them away. I know this steak doesn't exist. A Mayo Clinic study found that on average it takes about 24 to 72 hours for a food to fully travel through the digestive tract and be completely absorbed. You only really enter a fasted state after 18 to 20 hours of fasting. It means that your body is gonna digest the food that you eat much more slowly. Our intestines will contract according to the speed at which it can digest food. If they can't handle any more protein, then they won't waste this precious resource away, but they will simply slow down gastric emptying. After a few moments when you've digested the protein you've already consumed, the intestines will then move the remaining protein down the line so to say and they're gonna continue absorption. Which means that if you consume more protein that is needed to trigger protein synthesis right now, it's gonna slow down the digestion of the extra protein. And then it's gonna gradually release those amino acids into the bloodstream over the course of the coming few hours as your protein synthesis gets lower again. It's literally like a down the line effect of when your protein synthesis gets lower, you're gonna elevate it again with the protein that you consumed from the meals, and it's gonna last a much longer time. Some amino acids can even be temporarily stored inside muscle cells for future use, whether that be for maintaining amino acid homeostasis or for energy production. So, does your body really only absorb 30 grams of protein per meal? Where does this idea come from? The reason it's thought that you can only absorb 30 grams of protein in one sitting is that you only need about 20 to 30 grams of protein to trigger muscle protein synthesis and actually build muscle. But it doesn't really tell you that you can't absorb more protein. Triggering muscle protein synthesis is mostly regulated through leucine, which is the main anabolic amino acid. It requires about 2 to 3 grams of leucine to activate muscle protein synthesis. And generally, you can get that 2 to 3 grams of leucine from 20 to 30 grams of complete protein sources. But then again, this doesn't really tell you how much protein you can end up absorbing in one meal. It's just gonna tell you that if you want to keep the muscle building signal of protein synthesis activated more frequently, then you also have to trigger muscle protein synthesis more frequently as well. It's not gonna tell you anything about it, how it's gonna affect the muscle protein synthesis over the entire 24 hour period. It also tells you that having more frequent spikes of muscle protein synthesis doesn't equate to more muscle growth either. Because if you just eat only 30 grams of protein in one sitting, then there isn't much protein or amino acids to, you know, build muscle tissue from it. You're gonna trigger the signal, but there's no building blocks. Wasted. And hypothetically, if you were to eat like a slightly larger meal, like that steak with 60 grams of protein, then you would also trigger muscle protein synthesis, but you will also have more building blocks around. So let's compare it to two small meals of 30 grams of protein per each or this one larger meal of 60 grams of protein from this large steak then I would say that this steak is better. Right, the steak! That is only my theory and you know there is definitely a fine narrow line where you can balance those sorts of things. You definitely don't want to be consuming like 15 grams of protein for over the course of 12 small meals a day because that's not gonna really do any good for your muscle growth. You can't take it to the extreme either of consuming 200 grams of protein in one sitting because that's not ideal either. In my opinion, I would say that having slightly less frequent protein synthesis spikes but with higher amounts of protein are gonna generally lead to more muscle growth because there's gonna be more building blocks around. When you look at studies done on intermittent fasting, then eating fewer meals but with higher than 30 grams of protein in one sitting, it doesn't cause any negative side effects to muscle growth or muscle homeostasis. One study on women who ate their daily protein of 79 grams of protein in either a single meal or four meals saw no difference in terms of protein metabolism and absorption. Several intermittent fasting studies have also shown that eating your entire day's protein in a four hour eating window has had no negative effects on muscle preservation. When it comes to body composition and fat loss, then meal timing has been shown to be irrelevant and intermittent fasting doesn't slow down your metabolism or make you lose muscle. I eat for 8 hours and I fast for 16. Of course, if you want to maximize the anabolic effects of muscle protein synthesis and build a whole lot of muscle, then of course 
you would want to spread it out slightly just by virtue of triggering an anabolic response more frequently. Are you guys talking about protein? I love protein. If you're doing intermittent fasting with two meals a day, you can spike muscle protein synthesis twice a day and that's gonna be more than enough for you to force your body to grow. What matters more for muscle growth is the training stimulus and adaptive signal and also how much protein you end up absorbing over the course of the 24 hour period of balancing between anabolism and catabolism. One of the reasons people do eat smaller meals more frequently is that they want to get more protein into the day as well. The more frequently you eat, the less protein you need per meal but your daily protein intake in total can be higher because of that. If you're eating less frequently like with intermittent fasting then your daily protein intake may be slightly lower but your individual meals will be higher in protein and the reason they go for this higher total daily protein intake is that they think they need more protein to build muscle whereas in reality you don't really need any more than 0.8 grams per pound of body weight to build muscle. So if you're consuming two to four meals a day with the purpose of maximizing protein you would have to eat one gram per pound of lean body mass. If you're consuming one to two meals you would eat 0.7 to 0.8 grams per pound of lean body mass because you'll be more efficient with using that smaller amount of protein. Protein rocks! The overall message of this video is that whenever you're consuming any macronutrient, whether that be protein, carbs or fat, then you have to do it with a specific purpose in mind. It has to support a specific goal, whether that be for health, performance or longevity. That's why you definitely want to make sure that you're efficient with the way you consume and digest your food and not simply waste it away or burn them off as calories. If you want to learn how much protein to eat with intermittent fasting and how to start exercising on a ketogenic diet then check out my keto fit program is gonna tell you how much to eat, when to do it and in what amounts. But other than that, thanks for watching, make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay nourished. Stay empowered. Protein. Protein. Protein.